one. Finding fish is unquestionably one of the hardest parts of catching walleyes. Most serious walleye anglers are masters of their electronics. The reason why, walleyes often move in large schools and inhabit hard bottom areas or suspend in deeper water where they can be quickly found on 2D sonar. Being able to identify key structural drop-offs, points, and humps on GPS that tend to gather fish is a big part of walleye mastery. Good anglers also realize walleyes are moving targets that are constantly adjusting to forage that is being directed by changing wind and current. It's a complex game of chess, to say the least. Boat control is another important aspect of walleye fishing. Many walleye techniques revolve around precise controlled drifting live bait or slow trolling tactics. Good boat control skills are vital for an angler to properly present baits at the right depth and speed based on the wind and wave conditions they're facing. In recent years, more and more walleye fishing is being done in surprisingly skinny water. In spring and fall, large populations of walleye inhabit shallow flats and lakes across the North Country. Side imagery and 360 degree sonar has become unbelievable tools for hunting these roving packs of walleye. Let's join James Lindner and Jake Wallace with a three stage process to first find and catch skinny water walleyes. I mean, there's no question about it, how shallow is shallow. I mean, all the walleyes we've got today have come between four and eight feet of water. Nice one? Yep. Nice. Look at that. Come here, buddy. There you go. Come on, get that little rascal. There I think you, go. sir. I like that when you set the hook and he, and he comes out of the water. I got a question for you. For you walleye fishermen, what would you consider to be shallow water? For many people, a lot of people would say maybe, what, eight or 10 is shallow. Some people may be 10 to 12. Well, realistically, for a good portion of the year, actually, especially in early spring, like we're out right now, walleyes can be in super, super skinny water. Today, I'm fishing with my buddy here, Jake Wallace, and we're gonna look at strategies for catching walleyes from anywhere from four to maybe, as we're talking on the deep side, about seven foot. It should be an interesting activity. I know the, today's electronics has really sort of changed uh, my mind on how to go about targeting these fish. Look at that, so you can see the fish. See, those are all walleyes. It gives you the really the confidence to go fish this shallow. How many of them are really there, you know? You can just drive across these flats and really identify. You can see all the coordinates that we just made one little run through here and just start IDing. I'm looking off 55 feet on both sides of the boat and we're moving along on the shallow flat and just marking fish. Yeah, there's one big one out there. That could be a muskie or a pike. But what we're looking for are pods of walleyes. You know, most walleye fishermen, what do you consider shallow? You know, a lot of walleye anglers would consider 10 foot of water, that's shallow water walleye fishing, or eight foot of water. You know, throughout the spring, a lot of times we're fishing really shallow. I mean, the more and more, I think with electronics, it gives us the idea of how many fish are up in these really shallow flats in the early season. There's about three more of them right there. So what we do is we cursor over and we hit and we drop a waypoint on that pod of three or four of them. The biggest thing is just how fast it can speed the, uh, the fish finding process because a lot of times obviously 2D sonar really isn't really that advantageous because the fish aren't going to go let you drive over them when they're in five foot of water. Ooh, bunch of bunch of them out to your left oh, yeah, here. Check that out. Right out to your left yep. right here. You see them? All those are fish. There's one. There we go. Good 
feels decent. Got him? Yeah, start us off. Wowie. Yeah. There you go. On the board. That didn't take long. No, on the hair, just popping it. Look at that and got him. Four feet that's of water. How, that's, that's incredible Beauty. to me. But it just goes to show you, you know, it's incredible to me actually how electronics have changed the way we fish. You know, realistically, uh, we're using this uh, side imagery, not that dissimilar that we're using 2D sonar in deeper water conditions, but what we're doing is scanning the shallow water. I actually saw those fish out there. I put the raptors down, cast it right out to that school, and this guy happened to bite. And he had about five more buddies with him, which was sort of intriguing. But it just goes to show you how fast the electronics technology is changing today. It's not a big fish, but I tell you one thing, he'd be a tasty little rascal. <laughs> we'll get her back in the water. It's this lucky day. <laughs> but it's really cool technology once you get used to it and reading it and how accurate it, it is. And then actually, not only that, because what we're doing, we're actually, once we drive past them, I got side imagery up here, as well as in the back of the boat, and we're actually casting right to these individual little pods of fish. See what I mean? <laughs> that fast. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's cool deal. A little, little bit better one here. Nice one, that. Yeah. yeah this guy cute. here, we may need Mr. Clammy here. But the faster the water warms up, the faster those fish are gonna pull out towards the, you know, the first primary points and then the first secondary drop-offs. But we've actually had such a cool spring this year with not a lot of sun either. The water temperature's not warming up that main basin of the lake that fast, and that'll actually keep these fish really shallow for a longer period of time. The interesting thing is, is you know, throughout the, even throughout the course of the summer, we catch a lot of walleyes in very, very, very shallow water. A lot of big ones too, which is sort of cool. You know, once a weed starts developing, a lot of those the fish actually stay up in these weed beds because there's just so much food up here. A little bit better one. Nice fighter. He's actually fattening it up pretty good. We'll get her back in the water. It's interesting. Yeah, you were, we were talking about what's up on these flats. And you got a lot of perch. Look at this right here. We got this, good, what that guy was eating. He was eating a little perch. And then he also was eating shiners. <laughs> so there's a, food up on these shallow flats. You know, that's the real key. The, the interesting thing is, is when you come up here on these, a lot of these spots, actually surprising at this time of the year, there's not a lot of cover up here. The weeds are not developed and uh, there's a lot, not a lot here. So the fish are actually spread out and they're extraordinarily spooky. One thing that's really sort of critical is actually is your boat control. And what we're doing is a lot of uh, either spot locking with the uh, trolling motor on my boat, this is a Pro-V Bass, I actually have raptors on here. What we're doing is intermittently stopping the boat. When we come across them, stop the boat, and then fan casting around us. You know, right now we're in six foot of water, so the fish are really quite spooky because there's nothing for them to really relate to, you know, to hide around. Oop. Oh, I just had another one right there. That was another fish. The fish just came by the bait. Realistically, if you we were here in higher light conditions, in a lot of cases, you could actually look down in the water and see the walleye swimming around on the bottom. It's one thing, that's what I mean with your boat control. What you're doing is sitting in a fixed position. You can see that there's a bunch more out, right out in front of Jake, about 45 feet away from the boat, there's another, some more fish. But these fish, uh, it's like parting the Red Sea. It's sort of interesting in this really shallow water because the fish will not let you get close to them. You know, I just came back from a tournament over in yep. Sturgeon Bay, oh, Wisconsin, fishing for smallmouth bass. Small. And these are big ones. I mean, these are like a, like a lot of four to six pounders. And so many of these guys were catching these fish in three foot of water on sand. I mean, absolute sand. And those fish, I mean, those giant smallmouths, boy, are they spooky. 
you better be making long casts. You don't move the boat. If you make too much noise, I mean, that's just the way you got to fish to catch these shallow water fish. You got to be pretty stealthy in your, in your approach. Everything from boat control, your presentation. Even though we're fishing relatively shallow water, the fish have the tendency to be really holding on a specific depth curve. And right now, it seems like a lot of these fish are holding on that like six to seven foot is the really critical depth. Critical depth. And you'll see that at different points in times. And sometimes it could be shallower. Sometimes it could be slightly deep, deeper. But the, the, you know, as you move along, especially when you drive over here with side imagery, you really see it when you drop down those coordinates and you can see that all the fish, will, a lot of the fish will be at a really specific depth curve. Even though there's not really you know, that much cover or anything there to hold them on a specific depth level, it's, which is sort of always intriguing to me. So one thing Jim and I have been playing around with today is our weight of our jigs we're using. So uh, we've kind of found today that that one eighth size is kind of that sweet spot, but you know, some days it might be that one fourth ounce, uh, you might go lighter with a one sixteenth ounce. And why that matters is it's going to be the fall rate of your bait. So you'll have different actions and it'll trigger different fish. Um, so just playing around with that will help you, you know, kind of home in and figure out what these fish want. Another thing we've been doing, you know, is playing around with color. So right here we've got Big Bites, Suicide Shad, Jim's got a few of those on. I've been rocking with the VMC Bucktails. Uh, I was using Neon Chartreuse earlier, um, now I'm going to go to black. I'm really seeing what those fish want, seeing, you know, trying to match the hatch and keying on what those fish are eating. You know, this shallow water fishing is really stealth. And it's everything from your presentation, your boat control, and then you look at my line here and it says, why in the world do you have bright yellow line on? Well, the biggest thing is for strike detection. But one part of this, this is eight pound test uh, performance braid. But one thing you'll notice here, I actually have about a 15 foot piece of Invisalign uh, fluorocarbon, eight pound test fluorocarbon line. So I have a really long, uh, length of it on there so it really gets that br bright colored line away from the bait that you're throwing. A lot of this type of fishing, at least popping these uh, hair jigs and uh, swim baits are uh, is slack line fishing and what I mean by that it hit, it's hitting the bottom and I'm popping it up and letting it fall so I'm just I'm not staying in really tight contact with the bait, but what that bright colored line enables you to do is actually see the strike. All of a sudden, I'll just see the line jump. And I really don't feel the fish hit it. I'll just watch the line, all of a sudden it'll, it'll tighten up. One thing that's really critical about really early season fishing like that is a couple of things. Number one is food. Walleyes just got done spawning. But the other thing, look at that, there's a bunch of uh, walleyes right there. Whoop, we gotta mark those guys. Uh, one thing that's really critical is the warmth of water in these big shallow flats. And you'll notice that my depth highlight, I have my shallow water highlight set down to five foot. That's the red. And then I have the depth highlight set from six foot to 12 foot. So what it does is give you a very good picture of these large expansive uh, shallow water flats. And the big thing about that in early spring, like we are right now, we've actually had really a pretty cool spring, that this water temperature up on these flats is, is considerably warmer than what it is out here. If you go out here and you drop a temperature a probe down 10, 15 foot down in the water column, the water temperature is probably six or eight degrees cooler and that's why those fish are up on these flats, is for two different things, warmth of water and food. And the bait fish are up here for the exact same reason. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five. Look at all those fish. That's a whole bunch yeah. of them. All those are walleyes, and right here we got the drop. We're coming up on it. Look at all those fish. Got him. Nice. Right where you see that? It's just amazing. It's just stunning. It's right on the waypoint. Right, I know. Yeah. It's just stunning on the way we you, you can go find these fish. You right on the waypoint, we pulled back up, drove over the spot, what laid down the waypoint, came back. You can see where my boat is. I cast it right to the waypoint, and we got a biggie to bite it. 
Oh, this oh, feels yeah. like a better one. Look at that. Oh yeah, nice fish. There you go, come here, buddy. I know I want to hit, put my, <laughs> my, oh, sorry about that, sorry about that. It's all that. good. Come here. come here, come here. That's a better one, come here. There you go. There we go, nice. Okay, come here. That's a pretty one, look at that guy there. A beautiful fish. Well, we haven't been catching giants today. We've been catching quite a few of them, and it goes to show you on how shallow these fish can, can be. No question about, about it. Pretty, pretty, pretty fish. We'll get some more. Come here, buddy. Ooh. Yeah, you can actually see where my waypoint was, and you can see I'm actually set at 20 foot scale. That's 20 feet, so I was about 40 feet away from that waypoint. When we drove past it, I pitched right to it, and that fish bit. The interesting thing is, is a lot of these bites are actually coming from a distance away from the boat. We're casting out at, you know, and they're hitting probably within the first 10 or 15 feet of the retrieve. Now the setup you're gonna want for snap jigging, rip jigging, basically jigging in shallow water for walleyes is gonna be a 6.8 to 7.2 medium power, extra fast action. This one happens to be a St. Croix Legend Extreme seven foot medium power extra fast action. Now this St. Croix is paired up with a Daiwa Progean 3000 size, spooled with 10 pound suffix performance braid. I've got that yellow so it's that high vis so you can really see what your bait's doing, you can detect those bites. And then attached to the braid here with an FG knot, I've got uh, about eight feet of fluorocarbon leader, eight pound help for stealth. Right now a lot of people are flatline trolling uh, rapalas in on the tops of these flats. By the same token, you know, we're in a relatively clear, clear water lake here and we're catching them right during the middle of the day. But in a lot of cases, you may have to go out early in the morning by, you know, 10 o'clock, everything's done. But the only thing I'm saying is, you know, walleyes are walleyes and they don't bite all the time. You know what I mean? You gotta go there when the fish are actively feeding. Oh yeah, let's see, where's that little rascal? What size are we talking? Ooh, He's nice. Oh, there you there go. we go. Now you're talking, big boy. That's what we're looking you know what? for. Wait, she's sort of a skinny little oh, rascal. Yeah. Just, boy, did she wolf it. And there's no question about it, how shallow is shallow. I mean, all the walleyes we've got today have come between four and eight feet of water. You know, the word of God talks a lot about grace and mercy, grace and mercy. In the end of many of the books in the New Testament, the writer closed it saying something like this, and it's pretty common at the end of, the, of that book before they go into to another one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Grace and mercy. What is grace? Grace is God's favor on your life. God's favor on your life. He has unconditional love for you. When that becomes real to you, unconditional, everything you've done, all of the stupid things you've done in the past, and boy, we've done them, and many of them are still do doing things we, we wish we never did. We wish we could relive these things, make different decisions in there, but God's unconditional love is always there. And when we come to him with a heartfelt, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, this was a dumb thing. His word says it goes to the east to the west. He just forgets it. It's done. It comes under the heading of grace. Grace, favor in God's eyes on your life. I remember quite a few years ago when I read something like that and I heard those words. You mean I have favor? I can have favor in God's eyes? That became real to me. There's times that I know that I could come before the throne, like the Word of God says, boldly before the throne, and said, God, this is what you said. Why isn't it happening in my life right now? <laughs> Your Word says that. Why can't I do this? And there's a number of times concerning some health issues with, with my wife in the past, some financial issues that we dealt with that were always turned around eventually. And there, but I came boldly into the throne and no that God wasn't looking at me, at, at me and ready to slap me down. And I have favor in God's eyes, uh, eyes when I chose to serve him. Truly, truly believe in what he says and I'm here. I have reverential fear 
for the Lord. It's not the kind of fear that you ha have uh, uh, when you hear the word fear. It's almost like a respectful fear. I don't want to make him mad. I want him to be proud of me. I want his blessings on my, my, my life. It's a, different, it's a different kind of fear. But you want his blessing. I don't want to be out from under his hand. Let me put it that way. And when that becomes real to you, that God's grace is available to you, it changes how you think and how you communicate with him. He hears you. God loves you. He cares about you. He wants to hear you talk to him from your heart. He hears this. And when it's in line with his word, in line with his plan for your life, and we all got a plan that's in line with his word, if we, we can follow through, he's got a plan for our life. When we get it right, it is fulfilled, it's answered, and life is worth living. I have to share that a little bit with you. I think everybody, or pretty much everybody, would love to know that they had God's favor, his blessing on your life. Don't you? Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good fishing season? See you on the water.